everybody and welcome to the Sedona International Film Festival. I'm Carol Kahn and we're coming to you live from the Sedona Rouge Hotel. And we're just having too much fun here, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I, I, I took a sip just at that time <laughs> to advertise. <laughs> to advertise. Um, I do want to introduce Asher Grodman. And uh, he has produced, wrote, and acted in the film Train. And I directed it too. It is entirely my fault. Everything that's wrong with this film is completely no, my responsibility. Everything wrong is everything right with the film. And tell us a little bit about the premise of it. So, um, my, uh, my father knew this, uh, this man, Andre Mentz, who was a Holocaust survivor. And uh, he uh, told me the story, um, what happened to him, and I was very inspired by um, the story. And essentially what was going on was um, he was 14 years old, he, he and his family were in a labor camp in France. And this was before there was any concept of a concentration camp. The conditions were horrible and, and um, the situation was very bad, but no one had a sense that there would be like a death camp. That wasn't in the, the consciousness. And so he's 14 years old and one day um, the Nazis start packing everyone onto these trains heading east. And Andre, who's 14 years old, notices that there are women and children on the train with the men. And he's thinking, why? They're not going to help us. We, they're, they're not going to be any help if, you know, whatever work they're going to have us do. And so he had a bad feeling, and he snuck a crowbar onto the train. <clears throat> and as the train is passing east through Belgium, there's some kind of mechanical problem. And in those few moments, he busts through the side of the train and jumps off, he and his brother. And everyone else stays on the train because why would you do anything so impulsive? They told you to stay put. It's like the NYPD saying, stay right here. Um, and, uh, and they just jumped. And because of that impulsive, perhaps irrational act, um, he lived. And so I was taken aback by the fact that this single moment could yield an entire life. And, uh, and then I thought about the context, the, the, the sense that I look around on the train and every person is on their phones and we're completely missing everything in front of us. So um, I obviously didn't have the money to shoot a 14 year old on a train in Belgium and all that stuff. So I reset it in a modern context where the grandfather, Andre, was meeting his granddaughter's boyfriend who is in need of a lesson. And uh, the two men kind of go head to head. Um, yeah, and you hear the story. Now, um, Eli Wallach was um, in the film. Yes, Eli Wallach plays Andre. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the film, uh, well, I'll say this. Eli doing this film was like the greatest gift that I could ever have and has been a highlight of my time as an actor, filmmaker, everything. Um, and it was my first time directing. So to have him as your, you know, it was terrifying. And he was wonderful. Um, and, uh, and then when he passed away a couple of years ago, my intention was to toss the film away. I didn't want to release it. It felt kind of wrong to, um, I don't know, after he, after he was gone to release something. I mean, he had seen it, but uh, it just felt wrong. And uh, a friend of mine reminded me of a story that I told him about Eli on set, which was um, we shot everything. <laughs> everything was an exterior on the street in New York, which is hell. <laughs> It's horrible to shoot um, outside of New York. And holding where the actors would stay and we would keep equipment was inside this restaurant. And while Eli was waiting to shoot, he had a chair that he had put by the, uh, the doorway that connected the interior and the exterior, and he just sat there. And if anyone had a free moment, they could join him, and he would just tell them stories all day long. And, uh, and he just loved having an audience. When I would go visit him, he would take me around the apartment and show me all the little <laughs> relics that he had from his, I mean, and he'd been around for, he was Marlon Brando's landlord. I mean, uh, so I figured if I release this film, I should dedicate it to him and just have it be a message that look at this guy who had this legendary career and he was still willing to make this tiny little film just because he had a day free. And I, that blew me away. Well, not only that, but the whole entire process in the film, it's, it changed your life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I um, I had uh, an undergrad. I I'd been studying writing and directing, and um, and I, I went to school at Columbia, so I was around. I was still acting in the city and everything. And um, but this was the first time that I had directed something that was going to have any kind of life. And uh, you know, you're screwing around, and you're figuring out, oh, how this works. Oh, I wonder how this would look. And, so, and then suddenly, Eli Wallach says he wants to do your movie, 
uh, and you're like, well, I better figure out what the hell I'm doing. Um, so yeah, and this journey with this film, uh, I feel like there's kind of a learning process that happens with anything you try. You try it, and you like hate yourself for a little bit for the mistakes you make, and so, and then when it works, you feel really good. And so all those range of emotions were uh, accentuated by the fact that he was in this film and I felt the stakes were really high um, to make something that he would be proud of. Um, and that was worthy of him because his performance is amazing. I mean, he, uh, I, I've been an actor for a while and, and so I, I, I can, the things that you work really hard to try to do, he just, just flowed out of him. Like you can, see his thoughts in his eyes. Every little uh, impulse he would have, it was, it was amazing. Nothing was ever the same. Everything was brand new and on the spot. It was amazing. And one of the things that you, you just talked about too, um, that Eli spent a lot of time with people, you know, during the movie process, and mm -hmm. but you took away a lot from just observing him in that situation. Yeah, I mean, the, the concept of the, the film is someone who is living in the moment and appreciating the moment in front of them because he knows uh, how fragile it is versus a young guy who is has no presence in this moment and is thinking about the next day or the next thing, you know. And uh, I think our roles on set uh, fit right into those characters because Eli was there enjoying, he's 96 when we shot it, he was enjoying being there and had uh, just life like flowing through him and was enjoying meeting everyone he saw and I was freaking out and trying to <laughs> do I didn't have a producer I was the director we had people walking in and out of the set and and uh, and shooting on the street so if a car pulls up like a FedEx truck pulls up in, the, in our shot we have to wait for the FedEx truck to move or we can lose like you know two hours um, and so I was just balancing all these different things and then I couldn't see playback it, there was a lot I was running around like a madman, and uh, and then the moments that I did get to sit down with Eli were like, whew, you know, it was amazing. Um, the funny thing was, I had no intention of acting in this movie. It was not my plan at all. Uh, and then when Eli said he was going to do it, I was like, well, then I'm going to act with him. <laughs> I want to be in the movie with Eli. And the funny thing was, um, when you get to set on a film that, as I said, is entirely your fault, um, you, your main goal is let there just be a movie at the end of this. And so I shot all of Eli's stuff out first as I didn't want to have to worry about him. I wanted to just get all that done so we could release him and let, let him go. Um, so I had him for about a day and a half and uh, we ran out of time. And so I never actually, like none of my performance in the film is played across from Eli. We lost him. Um, he had some place, he had other places he had to be. And so I brought my mom in, who read Eli's lines in his chair across from me. We did that for a little bit. And then we got a, because um, we needed to get a dirty shot over uh, uh, Andre's uh, face. And uh, then we brought in a 91-year-old body double from Newark, who was a pharmacist with nine fingers. Um, <laughs> And uh, his name was Sidney, who was amazing. And, uh, and he um, talked the entire time, never stopped talking. We couldn't shoot. He was just like, are you, he, he wouldn't realize when I started acting and was like, why, you shouldn't be talking. The camera's really, you shouldn't. And then eventually Sidney fell asleep. And once Sidney fell asleep, my mom took the script, read the lines. I was playing it to a sleeping Sidney and hearing the lines from my mother. And that's what you see in the film. <laughs> So, pure entertainment. It's the, the movie making <laughs> the magic. Side. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do want to open up some of the magic to questions sure. in the media. Yes. Um, I imagine working with Eli Wallach was like a mini masterclass in and of itself. Mm. Can you share any particularly poignant lessons you learned from him, and maybe how has it affected your projects um, in the future, or how will it? Yeah, sure. Uh, so. Um, A first-time director having to direct Eli Wallach is a very daunting thing. Um, and because I ended up being in the film, I never really had to direct him. I never had to say, uh, Mr. Wallach, could you try it this, you know. I got to just play with him. So I would do certain things. And whenever I would make one choice going over here, 
he would it would like open up a whole new uh, um, like like treasure chest of ideas from him. He never did the same thing twice. And everything he did was completely lived in. It's like the camera starts rolling and he doesn't change. Who he is off camera goes right into who he is in camera. He's having thoughts spontaneously, like he's talking to you and then I have this thought over here and I'm, oh, and you're talking. And it's just, it's contain everything is reactive. And, uh, um, yeah, reactive and just, and, and, and created in the moment. Of course, our lines were there. It was my, my script, but uh, he was just a factory of life. And, um, and all I had to do was change one little thing and then it would release all these other ideas and then put something over here, release all these other ideas. And I think it was really not to, um, you know, beat this theme over the head, but it really was like a, a lesson of being in the moment and how the, especially for film, the moment here between you and I is more important than anything else we're doing because um, you may get a word wrong or a line wrong or something like that, but truth is the most important thing. In theater, and I've worked in theater quite a bit, there's a theatricality that can exist, and so there can be a certain kind of style and stuff like that, but in film, because it's so intimate, the truth has to be right there. Otherwise, you check out. Mm -hmm. okay. Do I call on them, or do you call them? <laughs> <laughs> what happens? Uh, you want to fight with me, or? <laughs> no, you can do it. Okay. It's fine. Go ahead, Trisha. Well, when you mentioned the intimacy, mm. this film, it just, you feel, like you're right in the middle of this incredible conversation and learning opportunity. And as a viewer, you come away with that same sensation of realizing, wow, I need to live in the moment. And, and I'm not going to be a spoiler alert, but that line of Eli's to your girlfriend on film, it just made me think about every time I pick up my cell phone, you know, when I'm with other people. Yeah. It was just absolutely incredible. And you did the editing as well? I did. I did. It was my first time editing, and, and um, but I, I had an editor, Adam Bertacci, who was wonderful. And he kind of started it, and then I was um, uh, giving notes. And, and, and he was great because he was kind of teaching me as we went. And then there were a lot of things that he advised me, don't do. <laughs> and then I was like, no, I want to do them. Um, and so then I, I, I feel like um, uh, his work is great, but there are some choices that I made that I don't know if he would condone. <laughs> so I felt like, okay, I shouldn't let him feel like this is all his fault. I know I use the word fault a lot, but it's, <laughs> it's a Jewish thing. I don't know. Um, uh, so we did it together, really. Um, yeah. I mean, the touching story, but just the way that I never, if you had not told me that you had not played opposite of him, I would not have realized because the continuity just flows perfectly. Oh, good. So that's why I was asking about the editing. But well, that was the trick, and going back to your question, because I didn't get to be, you know, someone can say a line, um, but then uh, what's going on behind the line is the whole universe. And so I didn't have that uh, to play off of. And so part of what I was doing was going back and watching Eli's footage and saying, okay, what is he doing? What is he thinking? And trying to remember that and living in the space between like doing a monologue and doing a scene. Because I had what was right in front of me, but I also had what I knew Eli was going to, how it, it had to match, you know? So that was tricky. The movie yeah. train yes. is showing where? Is it showing again? No, we've already, okay, um, it's our, our two have, have come and gone. So how could um, people find out about your film? Um, we do, uh, we have a website, trainshortfilm.com. We, um, uh, we're going to be doing a film festival in Manhattan after this. Uh, just keep, keep tabs on us. We're on the Twitter and the Instagram and, and all that, that jazz. We're around. Well, it's such a pleasure to have you. Thank it's you for your story. You. Steven Spielberg even made a comment about it. He so. did. <laughs> he did. That was, that was amazing. Yeah, a friend of mine, um, procured that for me and I was like oh can I use this really? <laughs> I was like, yeah go ahead well we look forward to seeing you in more films and also thank behind you. the scenes too so thank you for joining us thank you so much it's a pleasure to be here this uh, can I say something about the festival is sure. that cool <laughs> this is one of my favorite festivals I've ever been to it is excellent like everything that I kind of wish a festival would do you guys have done except for the the cold water that I, <laughs> hot water in the shower would be nice <laughs> 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 Uh, no, I'm great. Thank That's you. awesome. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. All right. And we'll be Go back ahead. with more from the Sedona F International Film Festival.